when you first learn something, you don't know a lot about it. And so if you ask what's possible, well, our best estimate is we're going to see this, but could it be a little more, a little less? Could it be a lot more, a lot is possible. And then you learn more and you say, no, the answer is about here and we don't have much uncertainty in that. So some of the things that we originally worried about, the danger of those has gone down. Other things that we worried about, I think we appreciate that they're a little more likely than we once thought. Do an example. Um, in Plants live in the ocean, they die, they fall to the bottom, they get buried. Um, bacteria living down there make methane. If it's cold enough and deep enough, that methane gets squeezed into an ice, and there's a huge amount of methane ice in the seafloor. Under that, where it's warmer because of the heat of the earth, there are methane bubbles. If there's bubbles, there's a chance that if something broke or moved, that they could bubble out. When people first discovered just how much of this there is, it's possible that there's as much carbon buried in those seafloor as there is in fossil fuels. People were scared. Could there be giant methane belches that change the world? After that, science, real science, hard science, people going out and doing the work. And it's pretty clear now that it's very unlikely that there will be giant methane belches that change the world because there are safety valves that prevent getting too much that can come out too fast. It's still very clear that if we warm it up, this is a source of an amplifier that we can melt some of that ice, that what we do, nature will amplify it partially through this, but it will do it over decades to centuries, not over this afternoon. What do you think, now you, you mentioned methane in the seafloor, okay, so, <coughs> and I like that methane ice metaphor it works better than a science term. Um, what about the Siberian continental shelf? Right, so there is a lot of methane up under the Siberian continental shelf. Uh, part of it is sort of a history of where the ice sheets were and when they went back and, and when ice sheets were big but they weren't on the Siberian continental shelf, sea level was lower and it froze really deeply. And so there's a lot of history that is sitting there and some of that is bubbling out. We're pretty sure that the safety valves that apply in the deep ocean also apply on the Siberian continental shelf. So it will be an amplifier of what we're doing, but we're pretty confident that it won't be a giant methane belcher. You, you want to quantify pretty confident? Right, so pretty confident. <sighs> I tell a story that how confident you are, how much you pound on the table, a lot of it depends on the situation. And I, I had this remarkable experience a lot of decades ago. I was a, a young student in Antarctica and I had been in Greenland. And the air wing commander was going to go to Greenland and he wanted to know whether his plane would fall in a crevasse. And I told him scientifically with great confidence, this is why you won't fall in a crevasse. And he said, okay, if I go to Greenland and I fall in a crevasse, I'm going to come back and find you. I'm going to put your private parts in a vise. I'm going to set a table on fire and I'm going to give you a butcher knife. He said, am I going to fall in a crevasse? I said he should do a little checking before he landed. <laughs> and and a, lot of, a lot of these abrupt climate changes are like that. We think it's very unlikely, less than 10%, less than 5%, maybe less than 1% chance that it will be giant methane belches that change the world. But what I guarantee my reproductive future on that? No. <laughs> and that is a very important thing about abrupt climate change overall. It's a very important thing about climate change overall. And maybe the biggest thing that you can say about climate change is that when we look at it, we have a best scientific estimate of what we face. And the knowledge is that if we use this, we can be better off. We can take that knowledge and make changes in the way we behave that gives a bigger economy and other things. This makes us better off. Is it possible that we have overestimated the dangers? Is it possible to be a little better? Sure. Is it possible to be a little worse? Sure. Is it possible that somehow just turning up CO2 turns the earth into Eden? 
building something wonderful takes getting a lot of things right and we're just cranking up CO2. Is it possible that CO2 breaks things that we really care about and things are a lot worse than we expect? Yes, it is. And so when we look at climate change, best estimate, a little better, a little worse, a lot worse. The uncertainties are mostly on the bad side. And 